Welcome to our worship Sunday, May the 16th. Let us light the Christ candle. We light the memorial candles today. We remember and pray for everyone these days who is doing online learning. We pray for teachers and students, including the teenagers who are mentally and spiritually challenged. Please join with me in the call to worship as printed as bold on your screen. God created Adam and Eve in the beginning. Jesus chose the disciples in the beginning. The disciples chose Matthias in the beginning. O oh God, may we begin again. May our lives be open to God's love. May we too merit to be numbered among the elect. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is from Voice United, hymn number 567. Will you come and follow me? Opening prayer. O God of Matthias, at times we are stuck. We are unable to move forward and only can look back on what once was. We wonder where you are leading us. As it seems we are alone. Help us to become unstuck. Help us to move by faith. To trust that you are with us guiding us along the way. Call to us so we will follow your ways. Encourage us to live into hope instead of frozen in fear. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. You may pray the prayer in the language of your choice. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Assurance of God's grace. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias. And he was added to the eleven apostles. In choosing Matthias, the eleven disciples prayed. Prayer is the foundation and starting point of every decision in the life of the disciples. May we too pray so that we can see what God wants us to do here and now. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Happy May 16th. We're in the middle of May already. Wow, where is the time going? Ah! <laughs> I hope you're doing well. So glad you've joined us for our moment of discovery. Now, my young friends out there, and my young at heart, <laughs> we're going to learn and talk about a big word today. You ready for it? The big word is serve. Yep serve serving service serve now you're saying miss jane serve that's not a big word right it's only five letters but it is a big word it's a big word with what it means and especially what it means when we're talking about our knox family and we're talking about our church serving in the church you know how many of you of my young friends out there like hmm making friends Eating good food, um, singing, playing music, maybe playing an instrument, doing crafts, playing some cool interactive games or sports. How about just laughing and having a good time, sharing some cool ideas between each other, having fellowship together. How about hearing a really good story and then maybe learning some new things you didn't realize or using technology. Huh. Well, I know I sure do. I like all those things. And did you know you can do all of those things at church 
And what's even more cool is those things are part of what serve means. Mind is blown here. What? How is sharing and having a good time and eating part of serving or playing a game or technology? How is that part of serving? Let's see what we can discover today, shall we? In our moment of discovery. You know, serving within the church means that we serve because we're grateful. We are so grateful for how much Jesus loves us and for everything that he has done for us and that we want to give that to others. And that is our calling, right? That's a big part of it, what our calling is. You know, when serving the church and our Knox family, our congregation, it's important for us to know that we're called. We are called to serve and this calling is a sacred one. So this doesn't mean Miss Jane's calling on the phone or Reverend Bright's calling on the phone. No, this is a special calling, a sacred one from God. Can you believe it? God is calling you? Absolutely. You know, God calls each and every one of us. Are you listening? Are, are you willing to accept the call? Are you willing to take the risk? Because you know what I just love? We just sang two really great songs are for our children's hymn and a responsive praise. We sang, um, I'm going to live so God can use me, right? A responsive praise anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to pray. I'm going to work. I'm going to sing anytime, Lord, so God can use me. And then in our hymn, we sang about how the church is wherever God's people are, right? The church is wherever God's people are praising, singing, you know, for goodness, for joy. The church is wherever we disciple, where we talk about Jesus' story. It's wherever we're helping and caring for our neighbors, helping those in need. That's what the church is. That's what serving is, right? Ah, just amazing. Well, I want to challenge you here with a couple of things. You know, the simplest way for us to follow Jesus is by doing what he did. You know, in Matthew 20, 28, it tells us that Jesus came. He came to serve, not be served. Big difference, right? By being obedient to follow Jesus in his way, we're going to mess up. We're not going to be perfect. But if we try, if we try really hard, if we get to know him, we will get to know him on a new level in a way that we can experience firsthand his love for others. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty, pretty remarkable, isn't it? Well, according to the Bible, too, every Christian has been given a spiritual gift. You have a gift. Do you know that? You probably have many gifts but you especially have a spiritual gift and we are to use that in the body of Christ. Now, an important thing to remember and an important step in determining how to best serve in the church is for us to discover what our spiritual gifts are. Here's the key. We don't have to know what our gift is before we start getting involved and serving and being part of the life of the church. In fact, we often discover the gifts that we've been given in the process of serving. You know, how many of us learn things by making mistakes or trying new things or trying challenges, trial and error? You know, that's the beauty of life. And that's the beauty of what God's given us too. He wants us to try and risk and get out there. You know, not be sheltered and afraid. You know, serving directly increases our faith. Through serving, you know, God's given me and you a front row seat to seeing him change other people's lives. Serving helps us to see and experience what we're made for. You know, through serving, it gives us our fullest joy from helping others. You know, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do his good works. Serving, it draws us into an authentic community. Our Knox community, right? If I had to choose one word to describe how serving's affected my life, there you go, community. 
Consider that, right, Knox? God has used the people in our community to pray for you, to encourage you, to teach you, to serve you too. So not just you serving, you're being served as well. And you know what else? Serving requires, it does require obedience and, and it redirects our focus to Jesus. It's not too much to ask. Well, I wanted to just leave you here because I know I've been talking for quite a while, but this is a great moment of discovery, isn't it? And to learn what this big word serve means. And doesn't it just make you want to say, listen, church, I'm here. What, what can I do? Well, if you're thinking, Miss Jane, I, I, I don't know if I want to do what you're doing or what Pastor Bright is doing or what Ross is doing or... No, you know what? This is sort of what I've been called to do and, and Pastor Bright and Ross and, and everybody else. But you have something. There's something that's there just for you. I came across this. There's actually 75 unbelievable ways, and this isn't even the full list in its entirety, of ways you could help serve the church. Get a load of this, right? I'll just, I'll just do a few because there's so many. You can serve by, you know, volunteering, of course, visiting people, running copies off, hosting a night, a games night, sending cards out. Hey, even holding an umbrella as we walk out of the church for somebody who forgot their umbrella. You know, running the sound system, fixing broken things around the church, being part of the greeting committee, being part of the cooks, running errands, teaching Sunday school, volunteering for all of our community outreaches, restocking, um, Oh my goodness, singing. There's so much. There's so much. It's exciting. It really is. Don't be afraid of the word serve. L embrace it. Let's figure out what your spiritual calling is. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of the service. Take care. Today's scripture reading is taken from Acts chapter 1, verses 15 to 17 and 21 to 26. This event recorded in Acts takes place shortly after Jesus has ascended into heaven. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 people and said, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to this resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship for which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the 11 apostles. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I heard about this minister. He was raising funds for a new sanctuary. He said to the congregation, anyone that'll give $1,000 can pick out the next three hymns. This lady in the bag, she raised her hand and said, I'll do it. The minister got so excited. Thank you so much. Now, which three hymns would you like? The lady looked over at the congregation and said, I'll take him and him and him. Now, that's not how they chose Matthias in the book of Acts. As Jesus ascended to heaven, according to the scripture, Jesus blessed the followers, saying, Do not leave Jerusalem. Stay here with each other and wait for the promise of God coming to pass. And he says there were about 500 followers, 500 people listened to the same message, 
but only 120 people obey the word. Only 25%. Jesus had thoroughly communicated this message to them. In other words, Jesus emailed them, left the message on the phone, put it out on the newspaper, but 75% of the people said, I can't stand the chance. It's one thing to listen to the word, and it's another thing to keep it. We can pray 24 hours a day, believe for a lifetime, but there is another step we as believers so often leave out. What is it? Drum roll, please. Keep the promise. Why keeping the promise is important in our faith journey? According to the Bible, in keeping the promise, the 25% of the people, they were able to discover who they were really meant to be. I'm sure many thought, now Jesus is gone, what's the big deal? What's the use of this gathering? Yet the 25% of the people said, no, I'm not leaving until I see the promise of God coming to pass. Many turned and started going back home. They made a compromise, talking themselves out of the promise. Life demands compromise. I hear people say, well, all of my friends lie and cheat. I guess it's okay. Everybody gossips. I guess I can do that. Everybody doesn't take care of their yards. Well, it's taking too long. Everybody is putting their guard down. In life, there's a constant pressure. Just give in and do what everybody else is doing. But you know as well as I do, we are not everybody. Yes, we have to go with the flow. Yes, we don't want people to say negative things about us. But at the end of the day, people don't determine our destiny. I wonder what would happen to us if we choose to be different. If we decide to delete those three words from the word compromise. A couple of years ago, my son came home from school and he complained about school. Dad, many swear at school, and if I don't, they would think I'm different. I said, big deal. No, Dad, I'm serious. If I keep being polite and nice, they may not hang around me anymore. Good. A friend is not really a friend if they dragging you around, I said. Keep doing the right thing. God will either bring you better ones or shove them out. Between Jesus' ascension, according to the scripture, and the coming of the Holy Spirit, there was a part that the disciples had to do. The 25% who were remaining waiting for the promise of God come to pass. Their attitude was like, I am in this world, but the world is not in me. You and I, we are right there today. Between the ascension and the coming of the Holy Spirit. The bottom line is this. If we ever want to live better or different... We have to look for ways we can be different or better. Even if everybody compromises their integrity, slacking off, we can still choose to keep the promise. Everybody's negative, that's why I'm so negative. Everybody's slacking off, no. We cannot stop people from dumping their problems. But by keeping our leads on, we can tell them to recycle instead. There was no place of compromise among those 25% of the disciples. Just like there was no compromise. There was no place of compromise in those pop-up vaccine clinic, those lineups. Blocks of blocks, people are waiting and waiting. Why? Because they believed in the vaccine. 
No one was there like, I tried, but waiting is too long, and I give up. No. The disciples, between Jesus' ascension and the ascent of the Holy Spirit, the coming of the Holy Spirit, they waited and waited and waited with a spirit of determination. I wonder what would happen to us if we have such a determination, if we delete those three words, C-O-M, from the word compromise. When everybody was compromising, they went up to the upper room, facing 75% of the naysayers who were saying, why bother? Why do you wait? Tempted to give up. However, they did something unthinkable to the naysayers. Instead of looking at those 75% and getting more discouraged, they actually said, you know what? Let us choose someone else who can take the place that needs to be filled in. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 15. They cast lots and the lot fell on Matthias and he was added to them, the story tells. What do we learn from here? When they did what they could do with what they had, once again, when they did what they could do with what they had, the Bible records God did something they couldn't do for themselves. He says, when they were all together with Matthias, included this time, suddenly from heaven there comes a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And they experienced the Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. I wonder what would happen to us if we decide not to compromise, voicing instead voicing our faith, putting actions behind our faith, Choosing our Matthias, can we experience the Spirit today? It seemed their journey came to an end as Jesus was ascended to heaven. But by adding Matthias, but by doing what they could do with what they had, they remembered how Jesus met them person by person, individually. And they realized they were actually doing what Jesus was doing. They continued Jesus' ministry. You know, our God, the God we serve, is the God of beginning. And we also believe God, our God, is the God of the end. But do you know our God is also the God in the process? God was in the beginning when he created Adam and Eve. Jesus was there choosing the 12 disciples. But God was there when the disciples chose Matthias. Growing up, my father, he was a minister. And he used to preach at different churches every once in a while. And my mother was at home with three little children to raise all by herself. Plus, with me, there was like having extra three children. When my dad was gone, one of us, for some reason, was always sick with some kind of fever. So my mother dreaded him to leave. My mother was different. She's not quiet. She's not reserved or dignified like I am. No, she sometimes openly demonstrates her faith so everybody could see it. One time I remember just before my dad le left to another church, she asked all of us to come out outside and we were all lined up and she had us all put our hands on the person in front of us, shoulders, like a making some kind of choo-choo train in front of a whole neighborhood. 
We marched around house, my mom telling everybody, God, you promise you go before us. No sickness comes on this property. Sometimes we have to voice our faith. Sometimes in choosing our Matthias, God does something, something that we can do for ourselves. Between now and the promise fulfilled, between the ascension and the Holy Spirit, God is still in the process. God is still with us today. A lot of times in our faith journey, we go like, God, show us what you can do for us. Then we'll decide whether or not we're going to stretch our, our faith. God, I'm waiting on you. When are I going to change this situation? When are I going to change people? God, send your spirit. Then we'll stretch out our faith. No, according to the book of Acts, between the ascension and the Holy Spirit, it clearly shows that as they demonstrated their faith, they saw God showing up in an amazing way. Just the fact that you decided to watch our service, you are voicing your faith. Just like those people who are waiting in those lineups for a vaccine. They believe in the vaccine. We believe in our faith. Sometimes between the ascension and the promise coming to pass, in this process, we have to voice our faith. We have to choose our Matthias. Do you know the, na the name Matthias? The name Matthias means the gift of God. So it was the harvest festival called Shavat, a huge Thanksgiving, family gathering, celebration, friends, everybody came together. But these 120 people, the 25%, instead they were with their Matthias, gathered together in that upper room. And you know the story, as they were gathered together, God breathed his own breath into the lifeless human body. God breathed his breath into the body of Christ, the day of Pentecost. Pentecost is coming between the ascension and the Holy Spirit. There is something in this process we can do. Amen.
Now I'd like to invite the outreach committee to make a report a minute for mission. COVID-19 has had a major impact on how we reach out to others in our community, across Canada, globally, through the United Church's mission and service. This morning, I'm sharing a story which reflects giving back and how your contributions to mission and service have had a positive impact on others' lives. When I was pregnant, um, I was very frantic. I just needed, you know, like a start to settle in. My name is Aria. I am a fourth year undergrad at York University studying law and I have a 17 month old son. I started using the Massey Center um, programs last year when my son was around three to four months. Coming here, I got a lot of help for certain things. I got to, you know, I got to do my citizenship, I got to do my license, I got to, you know, do maternity classes and um, classes where you just learn how to better feed your child, take care of your child, play with your child, how to respond to them. The number one thing that I love about being at Massey, being in a safe, supportive environment. As a young person, I was more thrown into the world, kind of. I never had the start that I would have liked. And that's the reason why I'm studying law. I'm hoping to be of you know, some use as a lawyer to benefit um, young people who went through things that I did. Thank you to the mission and service of the United Church of Canada. We really appreciate your support and your donations. Uh, there's a lot of young parents and children here that definitely benefit from your help. And we would really love for your continuous support in the future. Offering prayer. As Jesus was ascended to heaven, the disciples prayed together. The scripture had to be fulfilled. Let his homestead become desolate, and let there be no one to live in it, and let another take his position of overseer. They chose Matthias to become a witness to Jesus' resurrection. God calls us all to become witnesses to Jesus' resurrection. Amen. I'd like to invite everyone to join with me in the prayers of the people. Gracious God, we thank you for the challenges which life brings. It also brings changes which sometimes throw us into crisis. Be with us in such times in our Christian community. 
Like the early disciples, help us in our common life to find your guidance in our collective decisions. Help us to approach our decisions seeking your guidance through prayer. Help us to examine our own hearts for any unseemly motives, to focus on the common good and not to be driven by our own selfish interest. Help us to seek consensus and never be satisfied with power plays and divisiveness. Help us all to share in our mutual ministry. Lead us forward and help us to create a community where love, acceptance, and mutuality are expressed, where joy abounds, and where results are achieved because we are all working hand in hand together. May it be said of us as it was said of old, see how those Christians love one another. Open the windows of our souls to the world and its needs. Send us forth to herald the good news of Jesus, to be your servants to those in need, to visit the sick and the imprisoned, to remember the forgotten in our society, and to work for justice and peace. Use our varied gifts so that, as Peter suggested, we all might do our fair share in this ministry. Bolster us in moments when we feel inadequate for the task and give us courage. Amen. What would happen to us if we decide to be different? If we decide not to compromise, but to keep the promise? May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.